I first started my corporate consulting job four years ago, my days looked like this. Wake up, make a cup of coffee, eat some breakfast, head to the office, make a cup of coffee, do some work, make a cup of coffee, and then I'd end my days wondering why I feel so exhausted. Then I'd do it all again the next day. But then came this one day where everything changed. I was at a client site and they didn't have a coffee machine that I could use, so I sat there with this pounding headache and no ability to focus on what I was doing. Now, I pushed through, but I couldn't really get anything done. When I headed back to my own office, it was after 5 p.m., but I still made an espresso shot just to keep me going. And that's when it hit me. I had a coffee problem. I was literally looking at myself drinking an espresso shot at 5 p.m. to cure my pounding headache. What was I doing? I decided then and there that I wanted to quit drinking coffee altogether, but it was really hard to do. And that got me thinking, why is it so hard to quit coffee? And what brings so many of us into this cycle of waking up, making coffee, going to work, making coffee, repeat as soon as we hit those adult and working years? Okay, so I think this is like the first time that I've actually held a cup of coffee in over 400 days, and nah, I'm not drinking that. So the last time I drank a cup of coffee was October 1st, 2021, and I've been able to be 100% coffee free ever since that day, and I honestly don't think I'll ever go back to drinking coffee, at least not in the way that I was drinking it before. Coffee's interesting because it's almost treated like a survival tool for people who use it to literally fuel them, as if water and food aren't made for that exact same reason. Instead, we all seem to get sucked into this coffee vortex, and it's really easy to stay in it once you're there, because coffee's kind of fun too. I mean, it's a part of your morning routine, it's also a social thing, whether it be coffee dates or coffee chats. But underneath all of this, there's the baseline thought that we don't need to drink coffee. I can stop whenever I want. The only thing is, no one actually seems to be able to actually stop. Now, before I get into that, I want to first take you through how this problem actually started out for me. So my earliest memory of coffee dates back to when I was a little kid. Now, I literally come from the land of coffee producers, but the people that produce the coffee aren't actually the ones that are drinking it in mass amounts. That's actually for the people that live in the places where it's being exported to. Instead of having this blind club of coffee drinkers versus non-coffee drinkers, the adults around me drank it casually and without a dependency. And a lot of the time, we all drank tea instead. So for me as a kid, I was around coffee and caffeinated drinks, but it was never a problem for me or anyone that I knew. Skip ahead like 10 plus years to when I started university, that's when I started having the drinking coffee to be more productive experience. I actually specifically remember me and my roommate in first year studying for a test and we were starting to feel really, really tired. He suggested that we go to the convenience store to get some coffees. Now, what's funny and kind of weird is that I initially thought that when you drink coffee, you would feel refreshed, kind of like when you wake up in the morning. Instead, I felt super tired and it almost felt like I, it almost felt like I was putting on this mask to kind of just like stay up and push through the tiredness. But it worked and so I did it other times that I needed to stay up and then the habit was really solidified when I started working my nine-to-five internships in finance. To paint the picture for you, my first job was at Canada Post, which is a company that runs Canada's postal service or mail for anyone who's never heard of it. Picture it literally being like the office. It's a government job where people clock in, they do their basic functions, like the basic functions of their jobs, and for me, I was an AP, which is a pretty administrative role, and then they clock out. I learned pretty quickly that coffee was being used as a reason to take a break from work. Before people would come in or sit at their desks, they'd go grab a coffee. If they wanted to take a break, they'd go grab a coffee. It was basically being used as the number one excuse for people who were trying to avoid work. And honestly, I kind of did the same too, but I definitely a lot less than a lot of the full-time employees, but I still kind of went along with it. It was really easy to go along with it, especially because it felt like it was a part of just like the regular working day itself. What's crazy about this is that this is exactly what employers wanted decades ago. Let me explain. So coffee was originally found in Ethiopia before it was taken to Yemen to be grown and used as something to trade. It was used as a social drink pretty much everywhere it went around the world, but it wasn't until years after it hit the US that it became synonymous with getting through the workday. At first, it was really expensive, so not a drink for the masses, until after World War II, when they started importing cheaper and cheaper coffee, and it also was around the same time that changes were happening to the way that people were actually working. There were a lot more jobs popping up that needed attention to detail and the ability to work for long periods of time, so anywhere from factory work to office jobs. So when employers realized that coffee kept people awake, allowed them to focus more, and get more done throughout the day, 
employers decided that they wanted their employees drinking coffee. I read something that explained it like this. Why would your employer give you a free drug at work and allow you breaks to take it if it didn't have more benefit to the employer than the cost? They just wouldn't do that. And it's true, coffee breaks became a standard part of the workday in the mid 1900s. And the term coffee break even has its own Wikipedia page. That's how big this concept became. The reason this has stayed in place for decades now is because people like coffee. Like for me personally, I always liked the taste of coffee, the coffee shops, the artisanal aspect, all of that. It's like the perfect deal for employees and employers. Employers let you drink coffee to get more work done and employees drink coffee to make their jobs suck a little bit less. What's really taken out of the equation here is that we don't actually think about what the coffee's doing to our bodies. Instead, it's just something you do or something you're allowed to do instead of work, even if you like it. And that was literally me by the time I started working and consulting at Deloitte. I'd already done four internships where I'd watched people drink coffee all day long. And personally, like I'd done way too many coffee chats to even count. So by the time I started working full time, anytime I felt stressed or anytime I wanted a break or anytime I was feeling down, I just walk over to the coffee machine and just grab a coffee. And on top of that, I worked a job where I was working really long hours. I was traveling to so many different cities and just different offices. So pretty much all of that just kind of fueled the need for a coffee break even more. Which brings me back to the day that I realized that I had a major coffee addiction problem and decided to quit. I'll tell you about how that went in a second, but first Steph wanted to actually share something. Okay, so I've fully supported Dennis's coffee detox, but I can't say that I've been very enticed to join in myself, mostly because I've never felt the same way he did about needing a cup of coffee just to get through the day. I'm definitely guilty of saying that I need a cup of coffee sometimes, but for me, it's more just the habit of having a hot drink in the morning, meaning that I'm awake now. For me, it's more so that like I could always take a week off without drinking any coffee. I could skip it some mornings, and most days I have max one and a half cups of coffee anyways because I never make it through my second cup. Anyways, here's a tip that I found helpful for me to keep the coffee consumption under control. Now, we used to have a Keurig machine, which kind of like an espresso, right? Anything where you just have the pods and you can pop them in, and then we would just keep making more and more and more of them throughout the day. Then eventually we switched to a Chemex coffee maker instead. And what's really cool about that, like I love the experience of making it that way, it's more fun, but it's also more work. You can't just quickly pop something in, right? It actually takes a good 10 minutes to actually do the coffee making experience and get everything done. So it's kind of like a little barrier that stops you from just making more throughout the day, right? As long as you only brew like a really small amount in the morning, you're probably not gonna wanna go through the work of making another one and it can kind of help you cut down that way. Also, it's definitely nice and a little bit cheaper to make your coffee at home anyways. So try that out and let's get back to Dennis. Okay, so I'm like really an all in or out kind of person. Like I don't do things halfway, especially when it comes to health. So when I decided to quit coffee, I stopped and have not touched it ever since then. Like I even stopped drinking caffeinated teas and switched to non-caffeinated teas. And I pretty much do that every single day. That way I'm still drinking something warm, but not feeling like I'm dependent on it. Now, honestly, when I first switched, it really, really sucked. Like we're talking headaches and just not being able to sleep. And then I would say after about a month or so, it just stopped being hard and it got a lot more easier. And then when we talk about getting to the one year mark, it was more so about, you know, your discipline as opposed to you avoiding your cravings, right? Like I didn't feel like I needed to drink a coffee or wanted to drink a coffee, but let's say I was going out for a coffee with someone. It was, I had to stick to drinking the tea as opposed to just grabbing a coffee for the sake of grabbing one. Like that would have been really like the easier thing to do. It's pretty crazy to think that so many people walk around thinking that they drink coffee solely because they like it and that they could stop at any moment, right? When the reality of the situation is that it's a stimulant and a drug that your body expects to receive every single day. And when you stop giving yourself that drug, there's no way you're gonna be able to function like you normally would. What I will say was cool to see though is that it only takes a few weeks of consistently getting it out of your system to start feeling better naturally. So really it is possible to stop. Now, I don't think that everyone needs to stop drinking coffee. It really is personal and really depends on how you're actually going about drinking your coffee. But if you are someone who catches yourself chugging espresso shots at like 5 p.m., or if you're someone who's getting a lot of headaches anytime you don't drink a coffee, even after missing, let's say like one day, then you should probably think about cutting back. Throughout the entire year, I did this. So I said I'd go back to drinking coffee a bit once I hit 365 days. But once I got there, I just, I didn't really want to. I still feel like I'll drink coffee here and there at some point later on in life, but I just personally, I just do not wanna feel like I need it to do my work or get through my day ever again. If you guys have ever stopped drinking coffee or if you feel like you can't, let us know down in the comment box below and check out our last video on dying with zero. And yeah, you guys already know the vibes. Let's go.